Hi there, I'm John McMillan and welcome to this edition of PCB Tech Talk, the podcast where we'll be talking about design tools, the EDA industry, and the questions that you're asking. I'll be bringing in special guests from time to time, including subject matter experts and EDA industry leaders. So be sure to subscribe to this podcast, let me know the topics you'd like to discuss, and if you'd like to be my guest right here on PCB Tech Talk. Welcome, and first and foremost, I hope everyone had a great holiday season and welcome to New Year without ending up making any resolutions that you regret. I hear that resolutions are uh, motivators for some, but end up being uh, setbacks or uh, failings for others, so I hope you did make a resolution that's achievable. In this podcast, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the CES Consumer Electronics Show, some other technology and EDA events coming in 2016, and of course, EDA industry news, discuss some uh, 01005 chips, and as well as some other things. And to celebrate the first podcast of 2016, drum roll, I'm giving away an Echo by Amazon. I'll give you all the details on how uh, you can become eligible to win that later in this podcast. And I got to tell you, our home, we got one of these uh, for Christmas, and they're great. And if you I uh, don't know much about the Echo yet. It is a cool canister-shaped device that responds to simple voice commands. And it lets you listen to music and listen to shows and podcasts like this one, or radio, even audio books. And if you have Hue or Wemo devices, uh, you can tell the Echo, well, actually, her real response name is actually Alexa, to dim the lights or to turn on and off the coffee maker. You can request the latest news, traffic, weather, sports updates. You can even create shopping lists set timers and alarms and more. It's it's really functional, really fun, really entertaining, and even answers questions. And if you ask it, it'll even tell you a joke. So here we are in the year 2016. This year started off with a lot of activity in electronics world with the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. And if you follow social media, particularly Twitter, one of the items that really stood out to me was a one-man taxi drone. Look it up if you haven't seen it. There's some pretty impressive videos of it in flight. Um, it brought flashbacks to those uh, for me to those Jetson cartoons where I watched as a that I you know that I watched as a kid with those little spaceship looking vehicles zipping around in the air. It's a uh, it's pretty cool. Another flashback moment was seeing the revival of the Polaroid camera. Uh, Snap Plus is releasing one this year uh, with both Wi-Fi and an LCD screen. I was at a wedding last year, and there someone had one there, and they really were a lot of fun to take Polaroid pictures. It's amazing how everything old is suddenly new again. As expected, cell phone accessories like new cases. Uh, one had a handheld uh, generator crank case, so you could actually recharge your own battery. Uh, it kind of made me wonder if it would qualify if, if one of your New Year's resolutions w- was to work out more. <laughs> and not unexpectedly, both earbuds and headphones are also popular. There was even headphone boosters designed to plug in line with your current headphones or earbuds that boost a mediocre sound into something spectacular. Um, Speaking of the Jetsons earlier, uh, maybe their robotic housekeeper, Rosie, I think was her name, is also coming to life as several robots, specifically service robots, are predicted to open up a multi-billion dollar market. Uh, not only the service aspect, but also the human interaction aspect of robots it really seems to be a key focus and is really taking off. Uh, there was even a cool robot called a grill bot. This, uh, well, I don't know if it's a robot, but the photos reminding me of uh, like the Roomba vacuum. I don't know if you have a Roomba vacuum your house. Uh, I think it'll be a hit. They've already sold uh, 65,000 of these in 2015, and it's like a little Roomba that you set on top of your grill, and it scrubs the, the grill off for you. And that was a, that's pretty cool. Father's Day coming up. A great dad gift. Beats a tie. What else was big in the press? Um, automotive, of course. You know, I heard someone ask, so when did cars become an electronic device, referring to CES, versus in it in a vehicle show or an automotive show? Drones and some, to me, technology that's been around for a while, a, a long time, in fact, virtual reality. I remember in the early 90s visiting uh, the VR lab at UNC Chapel Hill. You know, and the multi billion dollar gaming industry is really driving VR technology into developing really high resolution and affordable headsets. You know, I can imagine folks wearing these headsets on airplanes, but it's hard for me to imagine that televisions are in any danger of extinction. 
These are just some of the highlights and some of the cool and interesting things that I read about and watched during the week of CES 2016. Of course, you can, and I encourage you to check out the web and YouTube for more on the products featured during that show. Uh, do email if you attend it. I'd be interested to know if, if you have some observations you'd like to share about uh, some of the items you saw at the show or, or the show in general. For you world travelers, the next CES 2016 stop is in Shanghai, China, and that's on May 11th through 13th. So make sure you start booking your flights early for that <laughs> if you're planning on heading over there. Uh, looking ahead at technology industry shows coming up in 2016, Design Con 2016 is just around the corner, uh, January 19th through the 21st, in fact, and that's in Santa Clara, California. The uh, Not too far behind is the SMTA, Surf- Surface Mount Technology Association, Pan Pacific Microelectronics Symposium 2016, and that's January 25th through the 28th. And I'm mentioning this one mostly because it's being held at the at the Big Island, Hawaii. And, I sh- and man, it sure would be nice to go to a conference in Hawaii, I think. I just really think it'd be good. Uh, the IPC Electronics Manufacturing Industry Event, IPC Apex Expo 2016, is going to be March 13th through 17th. And like the Consumer Electronics Show, it will also be in Las Vegas. And I read that they have upwards of 440 suppliers on the exhibition floor for that. And that's, that's pretty impressive. The world's largest IoT event, Internet of Things World 2016, will be held May uh, 10th through 12th, also in Santa Clara, California. As we get later in the year, PCB West 2016 will be held September 13th through the 15th, like Design Con and like the IoT World, will also be held at the Santa Clara Convention Center in Santa Clara, California. I read that 70% of the booths for that show are already sold out um, for that whole conference. Uh, Also, I guess submission of abstracts on all topics related to printed circuit board, engineering, design, fabrication, and electronics assembly are due by February 5th. That is the abstracts for papers for PCB West 2016 are due by February 5th. SMTA International 2016 will be held in September 25th through the 29th in Rosemont, Illinois. The exhibit hall sold out last year with 180 companies participating. Uh, Then we'll go down to the Southeast. PCB Carolina 2016 will be held on November 2nd this year and held in Raleigh, North Carolina. I've attended this event nearly every year. And it continues to sell out its exhibitor floor every year and grows every year. It's really a great, well-attended show. Also, a big shout out to you folks that listen to this PCB Tech Talk podcast. Downloads rose nearly 20% from November to December. And I can already see that January is on track to exceed that growth. So thanks very much for listening and spreading the word about the PCB Tech Talk podcast. Switching over to the EDA industry, uh, Printed Circuit Design and Fab reported the top 10 best read articles from 2015, with the top three being first was uh, related to embedded passive technology materials design and process. The second was entitled Beyond the Vault, the Evolution of PCB Design Archiving. And the third uh, was 01005 Size Does Matter. Uh, If you've designed with those before, the 01005s are some small chips. In fact, I saw an image of some 01005s sitting on top of flakes of black pepper. I thought that was very interesting. You can find the link to the complete top 10 list from Printed Circuit Design and Fabs, top best read articles of 2015, and a link that I will supply in the podcast notes. You know, regarding the 01005s, clearly the sheer size of these chip components is so small. And expecting that some challenges would crop up with them during manufacturing, I decided to look into what's being seen with those uh, small chips with regards to assembly issues. First thing I found uh, that printing, uh, the apertures are so small, they are susceptible to stencil clogging, insufficient deposits, deposit size variation, and alignment issues. Um, So you can imagine with the equipment, these very, very small parts um, would create some new challenges in the assembly process. Uh, With regards to placement, of these super small passives, things like component size variation, packaging challenges with tapes and feeders and ESD, uh, nozzle contamination, and with speed, some issues regarding placement accuracy, pick issues, and placement order. I actually saw a pretty interesting image of uh, one of these 01005 chips in a nozzle, and they are so small and they're so thin that during pick and place, 
there is a, you know, there obviously becomes a greater possibility for the nozzle to come in contact with the paste. If you are designing with 01005s, man, drop me a line. I'd like to hear about it. And do feel free to email me a picture of your design. I'd love to see it too. Next up, the EDA uh, consortium reported the EDA industry revenue increased for Q3 2015. Uh, this was released on January 6, 2016. Uh, the EDA consortium, EDAC, uh, Market Statistics Service, MSS, uh, that's a mouthful of acronyms, announced that the EDA, the electronic design automation industry, might as well throw another one in there, revenue increased 7.1% from Q3 2015 to uh, 1957.1 million compared to 1828.1 million in Q3 of 2014. The four quarters moving average, which compares the most recent four quarters to the prior four quarters, also increased by 8.8%. EDA industries continued to grow in the third quarter with IC physical design and semiconductor IP reporting double digit growth. This was said by Walden C. Rines board sponsor for the EDAC, MSS, and chairman and CEO of Mentor Graphics. And he went on to say, geographically, the Americas, Japan, and Asia PAC all reported solid revenue growth. Companies that were tracked employed a record 33,430 professionals in Q3 2015, an increase of 5.7% compared to the 31,648 people employed in Q3 of 2014, and up 1.9% compared to Q2 2015. The Americas, EDA's largest region, purchased 904.2 million of EDA products and services in Q3 2015, an increase of 7.4% compared to Q3 2014, and the four quarters moving average for the Americas increased 10.7%. Of course, you can find more and read the whole report by visiting www.edac.org. That's www.edac.org. I'll also put that in the podcast show notes. Uh, next uh, I wanted to share a quick update on what drew a huge response and what became a two-part series here on this PCB Tech Talk podcast. And that topic was addressing your comments and questions on the aging PCB design workforce. I got a great response to my blog about this aging PCB designer workforce podcast, and it came from uh, Sherry Liston, CID plus CMIT. She has a lot of certifications. And she wrote, having been an instructor in the U.S. college level system, I've seen some of the issues that we run into. School systems have the difficulty of recognizing PCB design as an actual career in the national list of career paths that they follow. The field isn't there. This is a glitch that hinders the U.S. education system. It is defined in Europe and the rest of the world. It makes it difficult for us to develop, quantify, and justify the course of study in any school in the U.S., This then carries over to HR systems. They don't have a good description on their list of positions and then rely on a double E, M, E, or P, E to define what the company needs. This leads to many misconceptions of what a designer's responsibilities entail. Sherry goes on to state that I am a master IPC instructor for EPTAC. We and other IPC instructors have all seen the issues and are working to create awareness and possible solutions. Getting a company to bring in the basic designer course helps a great deal for all involved. It at least introduces the responsibilities a designer has, what they can do, and what they don't do. Very well said. Lately, Sherry states, I've been working with design consulting firms to do designs and guide others in the process. This seems to work the best so far. I've been getting other older designers. I'm now blank years old. (laughs) I'm not going to Uh, drop your age, uh, even though she did include it. And she doesn't intend, and she does not intend to retire for at least another 10 years uh, to join her as this seems to be the best way to distribute our knowledge. Well, a big thanks to Sherry. Uh, Really great comments. Uh, As designers, we we see a shortage. We see the aging workforce and and, uh, we certainly see a lack of young people entering the workforce as a PCB designer. And like several folks pointed out, that curriculum, even in engineering schools with excellent technology, engineering, and design education majors, PCB design doesn't come up as a uh, intended career path to consider with those degrees. So out of curiosity, uh, I just visited the Bureau of Labor and Statistics, that's uh, www.bls.gov, to see if PCB designer was even on the list as far as a career goes. 
all my search paths led to drafters and engineering technicians and uh, drilling deeper into those descriptions, neither described uh, a PCB designer. Now we all know the job exists, so naturally. Uh, the next thing I do is I'll go off to find job openings with PCB designer in the description. You know, the results were as expected. You know, Glassdoor uh, returned 153 jobs. Uh, Monster, specifically, uh, a specific exact search for, you know, PCB designer in quotes, returned 34 results. But more than 1,000 jobs include variations of PCB designer, board design, circuit design, and also included engineering. Career Builder, the exact search, returned 45 PCB designer jobs. Uh, Indeed returned 96. Simply Hired, uh, 176. And lastly, uh, I, of course, checked out LinkedIn and an exact search for PCB designer, again, in quotes, restricting the search, equaled 54. Variations or ones that included PCB design in part of the job title, the description, or both, 620 jobs are returned. So clearly PCB designer is a real job. It's a real position into itself. And, and, I, and I hope that young folks will discover it and realize that it's not only a great high tech, but a really good paying job. I uh, hope you found the information this podcast interesting, a little different than my previous podcast. As always, be sure to check out all the podcast show notes. There you'll find all the links that I refer to during this podcast, as well as our email address, where you can send us your comments and questions. Oh, and to qualify for a chance to win the Echo by Amazon that I mentioned earlier in this podcast, I'd really like to hear more from you, our listeners. What is your biggest challenge when you're designing a PCB? That's the question. What's your biggest challenge when you're designing a PCB? Answer this question on Twitter. By the end of January, include hashtag PCB Tech Talk. That's hashtag PCB Tech Talk and you'll automatically be entered to win an Amazon Echo. And don't forget the hashtag as we use that to find your response. Our winner will be announced on the first uh, PCB Tech Talk episode that gets posted in the month of February, and will also be notified via Twitter. I'm John McMillan, and thanks for listening, and be sure to subscribe to this podcast on iTunes or your favorite podcast app to listen to the past podcast, and be sure to catch the next episode of PCB Tech Talk. Thank you.